In this video, I'm going to discuss edge anti-aliasing and how it actually works. So right now, the render settings window open. I'm on the Maya software tab, and here's my quality section. Of course, we can always change edge anti-aliasing from low quality to high quality or highest quality. What's it actually doing though? Well, one way to demonstrate that is to render out a really small resolution image, and then you can see what's going on with the pixels in more detail. So I'm gonna go to the common tab right now, go down to the image size section, and I'll put in a very small custom resolution, say 32 by 24. That's really only 32 pixels by 24 pixels. Now to maintain my old ratio, I clicked on maintain width height ratio to keep the same size render. In that case, it's 32 by 24. I also have a primitive plane here in the view panel, and that's a sharp edge that goes at an angle. When you have an angle like this, this is a classic problem that may create aliasing issues. So let's render that out. So there's a really, really tiny render. Now it's hard to see here, but I can use my camera keys to dolly inward. And there's a render of the edge. And this is what happens with any surface inside Maya. Since there's only a limited number of pixels, that surface has to be broken down into pixels. So a sharp edge like this is ultimately going to be stair-stepped to some degree. And you can see this looks like a little set of steps. Now, how nice this looks is based on anti-aliasing. If your anti-aliasing is set to low, you get one result compared to when it's set to high. Let's go back to the Maya software tab. Right now it's set the highest quality which means that the transition from the empty space to the surface is somewhat graduated. In other words, it doesn't go straight from black to gray. There's some in-between shades here that attempt to soften that sharp edge. Now, if I set this back to low quality and re-render, we'll see the difference. I'll have to zoom back in here. Here's the low quality. Now, you see that some of those steps on the stair-stepping have a really harsh transition from empty space to the plane. When you have a really harsh transition like that, that shows up as aliasing artifacts. Aliasing artifacts are extreme stair-stepping that could create buzzing when there's animation. Anytime you see any kind of jittering, buzzing, bad edges on a 3D animation, that's because the anti-aliasing quality was too low. You had these harsh transitions at sharp edges. Now let's go back to the highest quality and compare it again. In fact, we'll do a render region this time. So you see here again, harsh transition from black to gray. Let's render out that region with highest quality and see what it looks like. Dolly back in. Now what used to be a harsh transition has become softer. So now there's more in-between shades of gray. By having more in-between shades of gray, when this is looked at at the normal size, it'll appear like the edge is softer and there won't be as many aliasing issues. In fact, if I go one to one here, I know it's very tiny, but if you look really close at your screen, you might want to do this on your own machine, you'll see that area that was rendered with highest quality, it's a little bit nicer looking than the part that was not. Now, of course, normally we don't deal with such small renders, but this is still an issue with large renders. In fact, let's go back to the full resolution. I'll pick 6 by 480 through the preset and we render this whole thing. So here's highest quality. The edge looks pretty nice. If I go back to the My Software tab and go back to low quality and re render a region, it still looks pretty good. But if we start to dolly in, we can see fairly soon that it's just not as smooth. It looks a little rougher, a little bit more stair stepped. Here's the high quality section smoother transition. Here's the low quality section, rougher transition. When we look at it at a one-to-one -one ratio, and you look closely, you can see this is much smoother looking than this area in the low quality. So if you have a high resolution render, this is an issue. If you want high quality render, you definitely want to be in higher quality anti-aliasing settings. Now the bigger the resolution, the less of a problem it might be, but it's still something you have to think about. So in any case, how does this all work? So now you realize that there's a limited number of pixels you have to deal with, and you want smoother transitions along edges, but what is actually happening under the hood? 
When we change the anti-aliasing qualities here to this menu, notice that the shading changes. When you're on low quality, it's just set to shading one. If you set the highest quality, you get shading set to one, but you also get max shading. What does that mean? Well, shading and max shading refers to the number of subpixel samples. Let's go back to a really tiny render so we can see what's going on there. So once again, 32 by 24, I'll re-render that. Here it's much easier to see individual pixels. We'll go back to the My Software tab. So what that means is when you have shading and or max shading is, for any given pixel, you can break it down to smaller subpixels to figure out what its color is. Because reality is, any single pixel can only be one color. So now I've zoomed way in on my tiny resolution render, I can see the individual pixels. You can see that any given pixel can only have one color. It has RGB channels, but only one final color. It can be black, it can be gray, it can be some other variation like grayish red, but only one color. Because of that, when you get to an edge as a harsh transition like this really diagonal edge here, you have to make a decision about what the colors of the pixels should be at that difficult point. Even though it looks like a diagonal, it has to be represented by blocky pixels. So by having shading and max shading, you can determine the number of sub-pixel samples. So what happens is, you can break individual pixel into smaller pixels, sample the scene, see where the geometry is, take a look at the lighting, take a look at the textures, and make a more accurate determination about what the pixel color should be. The more sub-pixels you have, the more accurate the color. The more accurate the color, the nicer the transition between, for instance, black and gray. The more accurate the transition, the smoother the edge looks when you look at the render at the correct size. So ultimately, the more subpixels you have, the better. So what's driving that here in Maya is, is shading and max shading. Basically, max shading says you get more subpixels to deal with. The reason there's a shading and max shading is because there's a range. And that's based on the contrast between neighboring pixels. What happens is Maya looks at a pixel and determines what the neighboring pixels are doing. There is a high contrast between neighboring pixels. It's going to use the max shading. When it uses the max shading, it means it can use more additional subpixels. In other words, it breaks the pixels into smaller and smaller subpixels. If there's low contrast, like between pixels down here, it's going to use the shading. It's going to use a lower value, which means fewer subpixels. So any place that's high contrast, like this edge, automatically kicks over to the max shading. And it uses up to that many shading samples, which relates to the number of subpixels. In other words, it could potentially use up to eight subpixel samples for that pixel that's in a high contrast area. If it gets a pixel that's in a low contrast area, it just sticks with the low number of samples represented by shading. It might only make one sample per a single pixel because the low contrast area is not as critical. You're not going to see aliasing problems down here. It's not a big deal. It's almost all the same color. Aliasing problems are bigger where there's high contrast. So in any case, when you go to the edge anti-aliasing menu, highest quality kicks into the better shading mode where you have max shading samples. That can even increase the quality yourself by simply adding higher numbers in here. Like if I put two 10 in, it means that no matter what the values of the pixels are, I'm going to use at least two samples per pixel and up to possibly 10. So the higher these sliders go, the higher quality you get. Now, often just setting this menu is good enough for many renders, but you do have the option to go higher here. So that's how that menu is working. It's driving the shading and max shading samples. Let's go further down and see what these other attributes are. They also have a multi-pixel filtering section. Multi-pixel filter, when it's on, adds an additional averaging to the scene, which results in a slightly blurrier render. Now, why would you want a slightly blurrier render? Well, it turns out if you're sending an animation to something like video, it helps have the render be a little bit soft. Television can often be harsh on a render where you see all sorts of aliasing problems like stair-stepping and buzzing. And it's just based on the way the televisions work in terms of their interlacing. So if you turn this on, it's going to add additional averaging and make the render a little bit soft, but on television, that actually looks better. So let's check it on and see what that looks like. If I re-render this, now let's render a region. 
and belly back in. If you look close, it's slightly softer. There's slightly softer pixels here. Now we can raise the pixel filter X and Y to make it even softer. And we'll try doing that so we see a bigger difference. Now it's often very subtle. If I look at it right here, we can see this area has more steps between black and gray. So it's softer along this edge, whereas this has fewer steps here, this has additional steps here. So going from black to gray takes roughly four steps, or it only takes two or so here. So it has a very slight averaging to all the pixels of your render. And as I said, it's times that it's actually better for video. Now this is off by default. You only want to use it if you have a reason to. Now, if you do use the quality menu, which is a shortcut for saying all these different attributes, sometimes it turns on by default. For example, if I go to quality and set that to production quality, it sets edge and aliasing, it sets shading and max shading, but it also turns on the use multi-pixel filter automatically. So just be aware of that. If you do use this quality menu, you might want to check to see if it's better to have this off. Below that is a contrast threshold area. And as I mentioned, what determines whether you use the shading samples or max shading samples is based on contrast. What this does is tells Maya to look at the contrast between neighboring pixels in the red, green, and blue channels. If the contrast value is greater than these values, then it kicks into the higher shading mode. So for example, if you have two pixels next to each other, and the difference in the red channel between those two pixels is greater than 0.4, then that kicks into the higher max shading mode. If the contrast between the two pixels in the red, for example, is less than 0.4, it sticks with the lower shading. So where there's low contrast, that means it's not going to surpass this threshold. If there's high contrast, like near the edge, it will surpass this threshold, and therefore, max shading is utilized. Now, although you can set this, most of the time, the defaults are perfectly fine. So really the important part of this area is shading and max shading. So you always want to check that, whether you set it through an automatic menu, like at the top here, or whether you set these values by hand. Also, you want to check to see if use multi-pixel filter is turned on, because a lot of time it's not necessary to use it. So that's the basics about edge anti-aliasing. It's always important to check these settings.